Are you trying to be a YouTuber or break into the creator economy? Well, I've got some great news. This is one of the fastest growing industries in the world and people are crushing it. And in fact, we've got Ben Schmanke of Authentic, who's going to be talking about how he went full time on YouTube as a one man band. He is just crushing it on this platform. He'll be talking about the good, the great, and the challenges. He'll be talking about how he gets everything done, his daily habits that will help you be more productive in your day so that you can be more successful with your YouTube channel. We'll be talking about making money. We'll be talking about some best practices for you to go full time on YouTube. All that and more coming up on the VI show right now. What's up everybody? Welcome to Video Influencers and that's right. We are helping you build your influence income impact with online videos. Sean and I started this channel to help you crush it on YouTube. We're also the co-authors of YouTube Secrets. So make sure you pick up a copy, go to Audible, go to Amazon. Make sure to leave us a review. Um, it, people are especially liking the audiobook. So thank you to everybody who's picked up a copy. I've been on Clubhouse hearing how much you guys love it. So thank you so much. And speaking of Clubhouse, we've got a guest that I met on on there. Ben, thank you so much for being on the show today. Um, I'm excited to get into the interview. Hey, thanks so much for having me, man. Uh, I'm honored and uh, privileged to be here. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And you know, so many people are starting YouTube channels and you know all too well because we've been in a lot of clubhouse rooms right now and people are asking all kinds of questions, whether they're starting from zero subscribers, zero views, or maybe they've been doing it for a whole year. Definitely, it's a struggle. And you know, you have to be frank. It is very competitive because people want to start YouTube channels and make it their full time thing. So tell us a little bit about your journey, how you got started and what led you to today and being a full time creator and running a business on YouTube. Okay, so it all started for me about uh, six-ish years ago. I, I studied film in school and college, and uh, I kind of created my own uh, video photo business. And I just had clients from weddings to coffee shops, things like that. And then uh, I would just tinker on YouTube for fun. If I maybe bought a piece of video gear or a gimbal or something, I'd Google it, see if there were any good reviews, or maybe if uh, there weren't many, I'd make a review just for fun. And then... Um, it was right about five and a half years ago that I saw those hoverboards were starting to get a little popular. Mm -hmm. And uh, I saw them as a great filmmaking tool for like steady cam shots. And then I also saw like Casey and Jesse Wellens and stuff starting to get on those and just have a lot of a lot of fun. So I was one of the very first, if not the first, to make a hoverboard wow. review. And um, uh, yeah, and I was blessed and that thing just started exploding. And so um hundreds of thousands of views and then uh, tons of affiliate uh, income from that. And that opens my wife's and I's uh, eyes to the power of YouTube and yeah. influence and affiliate and all that stuff. So uh, it was right around there that uh, I dove uh, all in, went full time. And uh, that was about five years ago. And I've been full time uh, running Authentech, trying to create authentic reviews of all sorts of tech gadgets and the fun stuff. Uh, for five years and it's been a blast. Love That's it. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm actually looking at your channel right now. Let's pull that up. 361,000 subscribers. You're just killing it. And I love uh, bringing you on because it is a competitive niche. Of course, I go to your about page, almost 100 million views. And so mm -hmm. what I love about almost bringing there, you on is you did that basically all by yourself. Credit to the wifey, who I'm sure uh, you know is a huge support to you. But you know, oftentimes uh, you never know what's going on behind the scenes. What kind of shout outs or collaborations they're doing? You don't know about what kind of resources or support they have uh, behind the camera. And so one of the things I love about having you on talking about going full time is you did everything basically by yourself. Um, but before we get into mm -hmm. the first part, which is the habits, one thing you mentioned in your your journey is the fact that you jumped on the hoverboard trend. And one thing mm -hmm. that I've been hearing a lot, especially from Daryl Eves, and I think it's the number one tip that I can give to people um, that you um, could probably elaborate on even better is if you want to jumpstart your views right now and maybe you're not getting 
uh, the, the momentum or the growth that you want is jump on trends within your niche. Can you talk about how that completely changed everything to you and what your thoughts are when it comes to people jumping on trends and what are your tips? Yeah, I think, doesn't he call that uh, trend hacking or yeah, something for sure. like that? Yeah. Uh, that's everything right now. That's what Mr. Beast and from the biggest to the smallest, uh, that is one of the best ways to garner views and the audience and uh, a following of subscribers and such. And so um, for me, it's kind of funny. I know if I have a gadget, a tech product that is maybe about to be released, if I get maybe a pre-release uh, review unit, then it's almost like for certain, okay, well, people are going to be searching it about it and talking about it right on that release date. And so that video will do well. Now, of course, um, you don't always get that product early. That's very, yeah. that's very hard, especially when you're first starting out. So maybe if that product just releases and I can maybe go buy it and then quick in a couple of days, turn around a video that will often do well. Another thing is uh, seeing that wave or that trend, uh, the virality of something before it hits is that hover. I was on that wave right before it started to take off. And that's why I think um, I made it just a, a well condensed little review uh, video on hoverboards and, uh, and then YouTube really liked it. And it's like, okay, this is the authority on hoverboards. And so when all these millions of people are searching for hoverboards and how to buy one and stuff like that, I was the one that they promoted. And so uh, there's a lot of, it's easier said than done, but trying to stay ahead of the curve on what that next trend is going to be and then uh, riding that wave. And then you got to remember that that wave will finish, it'll crash down, and then you got to paddle back out and then find the next one. Nothing uh, survives forever. So I see a lot of people, even myself, hoverboards, they were hot for a little while and then they faded away. And it's like, okay, if I only did hoverboard reviews, my channel would be dead, but I had to pivot. And uh, I like all things tech anyway, so that was kind of a natural fit. But uh, but yeah, always looking for that next wave is really key. For sure. And um, actually, I just pulled it up on my screen. One of the best places to go is trends.google.com, okay? And this is so important to get on top of those trends before everybody else does because you definitely want to be first on scene. Uh, another tool you could be using is vidIQ. They've got the trend tools, and we'll be talking about how I use uh, vidIQ. I know that you're a fan of both vidIQ and TubeBuddy, uh, Ben, but well, that's a whole nother discussion. <laughs> Uh, at another time but the reason I bring this up is because you know you can work all day to think of amazing ideas and we talk about this um, in terms of the research of what other people are looking for but trends are something that just kind of happen out of nowhere and you never know and so why it's important to jump on a trend right away I've done this where I was a little bit late maybe even a week or a month late and the train has left the station. So, you know, mm. this is one of the daily habits I would recommend to people that I'm doing more and more right now to jump on trends, which is to find out what in my niche is working. So, for example, uh, there was this thing called the Delgado Coffee um, back in 2020. And if I had jumped on that and made a video on my YouTube channel, I could have easily seen a 10x in views just because it was trending and people are watching videos on that coffee making um, uh, uh, format even if they weren't fans of yours and so this is why it's important to jump on trends obviously people like Mr. Beast do it but let's get into the habits you know a lot of people when they're first starting YouTube channels Ben they're doing everything because that's what they hear that's what people are teaching them but you know all too well there's a few core things that you have to always focus on to get the most productive day um, out of your efforts. So what are the three things that you do uh, to be more productive, to create more effective videos for yourself? Uh, let's start with number one. Okay, so number one, uh, when I first wake up, I know it's really easy to want to check that phone and check, uh, go into the email box. Uh, but I try really hard not to even go there. For me, uh, my Christian faith is really important. So I wake up, I brew that Chemex pour over. I love good quality yes. coffee. And then I have quiet time uh, in the Bible. Uh, and uh, that's just a great way to start the day for me every single day. 
Yeah, I think that's so important for anybody. And, you know, whether it's coffee or tea, whether it's a Bible or meditation, having a moment where you have your own thoughts in your brain rather than all the thoughts and notifications from your phone. I think this is probably one of the Mm -hmm. best piece of advice for anybody that wants to be productive because you don't want to be a slave to the the next email and have to reply to people. You don't want to be looking at all the pop-ups. And I know the latest craze is club house right like how easy is it when you see somebody that you follow he's just started room and you're like oh i need to jump in there and then like your brain is focused on that versus focusing on more productive things and just letting yourself have a moment to plan which brings me to habit number two what is the next habit that you do that you would advise to a new youtubers and new creators trying to go full-time Yeah, productivity is key. When you're building a YouTube uh, business, uh, it's very easy to get distracted in a Mm -hmm. world of constant constant distractions coming in. And so for my number two is trying to focus on the main project for that day and for the week. So for for me, my main goal is one video, at least one video a week, hopefully two. And... um, and for me, it's like, okay, what's that? What, if I haven't gotten the video done this week, what's that one project that I have to focus on? Maybe I need to finish that script. Maybe I need to get those B-roll shots, finish that edit, um, that sort of thing. And uh, I know it's very easy. That email box is full of uh, companies that maybe want to send me some gadget or cool product. And I want to research it and see what I can get to review. But uh, I, take, I think it takes a lot of discipline. To say like, okay, I'm not going to check the Twitter. I'm not going to do this. What's my one um, main thing I need to accomplish today and try to get that finished first. For sure. And one hour spent creating a video for your YouTube channel is way better than six hours everywhere else. Even if you think that uh, Clubhouse is gonna help you network or Instagram's gonna help you understand like what content is working and even just like other things that you think are productive, you know, the number one mistake I see new creators making or even seasoned ones is they come in and they ask me questions about how to level up their channel, but I haven't seen the upload in the last couple of weeks, right? Maybe the last few months. So until you get the upload, There really isn't a lot we can help you with. In fact, the data, the information, the engagement, the feedback you're going to get from that upload, way more important than just about anything else you can do online. Don't get me wrong, preparation, research, um, you know, leveling up your skills, all will help. But all those should be done in that first part of your day, I believe, focus on creating the content. Would that be correct, Ben? Is there anything you'd want to add to that before we go into your third habit? No, you're absolutely right. And I and I know like Clubhouse, it can be a total time <laughs> vacuum that just like you jump in and you're like, okay, I'll be in for five minutes. And before you know it, it's been a couple of hours. So they can be very, very dangerous. And even though that might be providing you value or others, uh, is it actually really accomplishing that final goal of mm-hmm. hitting publish on a video? And at the end of the day, if you're wanting to become a full-time content creator or YouTuber, uh, all those things are just... Uh, you know, kind of side things that aren't actually accomplishing that task. And then uh, and I'll say like, when you finally do get that video done and then you hit publish, oh, nothing yeah. feels better, man. It feels so good, right? And then you're kind of addicted and you're like, okay, like let's see what the comments say. And now let me move on to the next video because uh, maybe I'll make the next one even bigger and better. Yeah, it's a great addiction to have because it's gonna help your YouTube channel grow. And there's so much to learn. You know, one of the things that you're hearing people be very, very interested and concerned with is the algorithm, right? And what data should you be looking at? What are the numbers that are important to pay attention to? But none of that happens until you actually give YouTube something to give you data on. So the upload is so important, especially if you're just starting out. Maybe you don't even know exactly what you wanna be doing. Just start uploading stuff and seeing what happens, right? Um, Obviously, you want to be clear in what it is that you're trying to create who you're trying to create it for and create quality content, but don't wait for perfection. Just put it up. I mean, let's speak to that real quick. What were like your first episodes like 
been when you first uploaded to YouTube? <laughs> Man, they're rough. I know uh, like Sean likes to talk about it. If you go back on my early videos, they're rough, but you have to start somewhere and you have to have those humble beginnings and you have to be willing to just put it out there and be okay with a little bit of feedback that might not be so sweet. Uh, yeah, go and look in through this <laughs> screenshot here. I mean, my dad's a carpenter. And so for a while, I was just making some fun videos with him on how to build this and that. Thing. Wow. And those actually did pretty well. And then, uh, yeah, I bought this cool modular furniture uh, called Love Sack. And that thing was starting to pop off. And so you are you're, you're throwing a lot of things at the wall to kind of see what sticks. But at the end of the day, you have to stick with something that is your passion and something that gets you really excited. And so for me, that was all things tech and camera gear and stuff like that. And so that was kind of the niche that I wanted to drill into. But uh, yeah, when you're first starting out, it's uh, it's really important to just put it out there and then go to the next one. And I hear a lot of people feedback. They may put out like 10 videos and they're like, ah, I'm not getting the views or the following or whatever. Like 10, come back when you have like maybe 50 or 70 videos or something. And then you can start like maybe talking about, oh, the audience isn't there. Maybe I need to pivot or reanalyze things. But uh, as Gary Vee always talks about, the, the audience will tell you, uh, you know, they're pretty brutally honest. And uh, and if you're not getting views or maybe the comments are saying we want to see more of this or that, you kind of got to listen to them sometimes. Oh, for um, sure. And so, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people say the worst part is when you get feedback that might be true, right? That, you know, inside is like, you know, maybe I could work on that. And so I, I say invite that because it's only going to make you better. It's going to improve you. And so everybody can be a critic, but can you be a creator? Can you continue to improve, get better? And ultimately the ones that upload, right, put themselves out there and, and improve the quality and gain an audience and make this full time. Don't regret any of that previous like uh, any of the uh, the criticism um, any of the the comments that might point out something you're not doing right uh, honestly everybody makes mistakes at the beginning so um, amazing mm -hmm. I love those examples I, I love that I got to show some of your early videos to show that you know it, it's practice at the beginning and even practice mm -hmm. can get you a lot of views some of those videos had like 50,000 views and those were practice for you, you know, before you kind of yeah. knew what you were doing. So, so important for the journey. Sean Cannell, the co-founder of this channel is a perfect example that had multiple channels before he even got started. Um, you know, an, uh, next week's guest had 30 different channels before he started the one where he blew up wow. 30 different channels. I've heard a lot of people That's say a like a <laughs> hundred videos, maybe like three, five channels, but 30 different channels. So um, it's part of the journey. All right, before we get into the third final mm -hmm. habit that you want to share, I want to give some shout outs. We got the We family in the chat. Um, we got Reagan V Films, Doris Laguna. We got Rosemary Renders, the Swedish car guy. Hey, thank you so much for being part of the VI community. Hit that that like button if you're getting value. I know that I'm loving hearing your story, Ben. Um, you know, I met you on Clubhouse, so it's awesome to get you on here. And I know we're starting the show a little bit early today, you guys, um, because we had a change up in the uh, schedule, but I I'm so glad to be here. Of course, um, this show happens every Saturday at 10 a.m. usually, and we bring in amazing guests just like Ben. So make sure you check out his channel. We'll put the links down below. But let's get right into the third habit, the first one being, you you know, have a quiet moment, whether that's grabbing some coffee, some tea. For you, it's reading the Bible. For some others, maybe it's prayer. Maybe it's meditation. Having a moment to think about what it is you want to do in your day. Second thing, focus on the main project, whether that's the video, whether that's, you know, something else that's going to help your business. Get that done first. What is your third habit for creating success and ultimately becoming full-time on YouTube? Yeah, the third thing for me is uh, supplementary channels. And so uh, for me, it's Instagram, uh, TikTok, Twitter, all those side channels. I consider them a funnel that all feed into my one main game, uh, my main jam, and that's YouTube. And so right now I'm having a ton of fun with TikTok, just kind of messing around and see what hits. And there's been a few things that are really popping off. I was able to build a pretty big audience over there. I actually just a couple weeks ago got my first sponsored uh video over there from HP. It's a huge awesome. client. It was super exciting. And uh, 
that started with me just messing around and playing with it and experimenting it and not taking me or my content too serious. And uh, I know that's easy to do on all these channels. So yeah, after I focus, uh, after I uh, complete maybe that one video or I got what I needed to get done for that main project for the day, then I kind of focus on those side channels and say, okay, well, what sort of maybe a little uh, TikTok or Instagram story or post that I can do that kind of helps promote my channel or what project or thing that I'm working on that day. This, uh, these are habits that really would help anybody. And that last point you made, Ben, for me, the, the, the takeaway is create something before you consume something. And so regardless if mm. it's your YouTube channel, if you go to Instagram, you go to Twitter, whatever platform, make sure you're creating something because that creation, that content is what's going to attract eyeballs ultimately and help build you your audience. So even off platform, I, I, I don't discount what you can do on social media. Just make sure you're being productive. And I love that you brought up the sponsorship because that will be my next uh, question I want to get into um, before we do the Q&A. And by the way, we're going to be doing a Q&A. So leave all your questions down below and get them ready because we are going to do another broadcast for that. But my question for you right now is brand deals. When should people start doing brand deals in their journey? Um, and what are some of your best practices or tips for people to not only have successful uh, brand sponsorships, but make the most money? Okay, so yeah, brand deals, uh, definitely, you need to be picky about it. We were just talking about this on Clubhouse the other day. I think uh, when you're first starting out, it's really exciting if you get a, a, a company reach out and say, hey, well, you know, promote uh, some, you know, mobile app game uh, and it's building castles and it's like super, you're like, okay, I'm not interested in this, but hey, they're willing to pay me money. Maybe I'll take it. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I'd, I'd suggest maybe slow down, be careful because uh, you don't want to uh, hurt yourself in the long term game because in the end you're building up an audience that is uh, all built on trust. And so that's why I titled my channel Authentech is because authenticity, I want to be at the very core of everything that I do. And so that means uh, very transparent disclosures and um, and making sure that I only take on brand uh, deals that I actually really believe in. And, yes. uh, and when you stick to those cores when you're first starting out, It'll be a lot. Uh, it'll be a little bit easier when you're down the road, and those numbers, those paychecks, start to become a little bit bigger. And then you're like, "Oh, that's really tempting." But uh, do I really believe in that uh, service or product? And uh, so, yeah, keeping that trust with your audience is huge. I'd say uh, don't rush into it, but then also make sure that you uh, have something to bring to the table for that brand. You're going to bring um, maybe some views or a couple click throughs or purchases and uh, make sure that your audience at the end of the day will be like, okay, I actually kind of, I appreciate this uh, shout out that he gave. And so um, if I get a dedicated sponsored video, I want to make sure I do a ton of research on that product. I go on Amazon yes. reviews and see like, okay, are, are people saying this thing is awesome or are they saying it's kind of junky because there's <laughs> tons of products out there that we all know that have oh, bad yeah. reviews. And they may want to throw money at you, but then in the end, I'm going to get stuck reviewing a kind of a bad product and a, a bad promotion that I really wouldn't recommend. And so um, staying uh, true to yourself and to your audience is huge. Awesome. Yeah. And, you know, I, I definitely during the Q&A want to get into some more money making questions and tips. Um, but I also want to get into some like last thoughts from you for anybody that may be struggling. So not just the people that are starting out, but maybe they've been doing this for one or two years and they're not able to make it a sustainable business. Obviously, it can be very difficult depending on your niche. But what would you say to those people um, that are trying to make this full time in terms of, you know, the, the beyond the habits, obviously. And by the way, I love that you said you're picky about brands. I think that's such a great thing to be saying no to more sponsorships and you're saying yes. Um, but lastly, what would you say to somebody who wants to make this full time? What are like the big takeaways or final tips for somebody that wants to crush it on YouTube um, to make this a sustainable business the way you have? 
Mm, yeah, there, I, there's so much we could talk about. I know, uh, I think Sean or someone, I think you've talked about this before, is that uh, just treating it as a business. I know it's really easy, like, oh, it's a social network, you know, you just have fun and uh, post videos. That's yeah. not serious. But now more than ever, like you were talking about in the, uh, in, the, in the beginning with those articles coming out, is that this is one of the number one growing businesses. And I know uh, Mark Cuban has talked about how in the future, uh, AI and robots, we'll be able to outsource a lot of uh, certain jobs, but it's that creativity that uh, you can't really outsource to a robot, right? And so this niche or this world of creative content and YouTuber and all that, um, it's going to be a long time until robots take over that, right? And so um, I think just treating it serious as a business, having a plan, um, making sure that you stick to that plan, uh, know who your audience is. I mean, I, to be honest, I'm still struggling to figure out who my audience is and how to connect best with them and such. But uh, I have some sort of idea at least. And uh, I think the better you know who your audience is and who you're making your videos for, the better you'll be able to tailor your content for them. And then it's gonna be a snowball effect because if you're making videos that, uh, really serves your audience well, they're going to want to keep coming back for more. And then they're going to want to, you know, click your uh, affiliate links. And then, uh, yeah, so that snowball, I think will just keep rolling. So yeah, make sure you treat it as a business. Uh, be serious about it. Um, you know, you got to have good quality, you know, study and learn from uh, the small, medium and big guys that are doing it well. But then uh, at the end of the day, I think it's not uh, if or but both is, um, you know, having quality and quantity, because if you do one awesome video, but it's, you know, once per month, it work, right? Like, you know, that's 12 per year. But if you do one per week, well, now your chance is just multiplied by 4x or 10x or whatnot. And so um, try to be consistent with those uploads and really stick into it. You might post 99 videos and they don't do that great, but don't get down with it because that hundredth video yes. might be that one that just changes your life. And that's kind of how it worked for me. There you go. Love it. Love the uh, habits. Very practical and very productive. Obviously, love your tips about brand deals and being picky and really doing the research before you do it because you want to work with brands not only that are going to be good for your business, but even better for your audience. And lastly, I think that treating this like a business and really being focused on it, not making it a side thing. By the way, nothing wrong with a side hustle, but you'll get side hustle results. And so we definitely want to work smarter than harder but there's nothing around get uh hustling and working really hard on your business and getting those type of results hey if you guys got value out of this hit that like button comment below what is the habit that you're going to be applying to your business to your channel crush it here in 2021 if you want to check out ben's channel go ahead and click or tap the screen right here if you want to see our full playlist of how to go full-time on youtube click or tap the screen right here we're going to be right back the q a will be happening in a few minutes so stay tuned on video influencers uh, we'll be uh, firing up the broadcast here in a second and i'll see you there for the q a